Hello and welcome to Watson Serie A, Match Day 14. Uh, everything is really hot. Uh, five teams only in one point uh, in Italy with Napoli. Leo is uh, still on top. The first five teams actually won and we got bored. I would say even fall asleep in the Milan Juve. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Edu. Uh, Napoli is still top of the league. Lukaku uh, back to to goal scoring form. Atalanta still winning. Fiorentina still winning. Lazio is still winning. So it's very packed at the top. But I think we're going to have a very, very great second half of the season for sure. And we have a Fiorentina Inter in this match Ooh, day. This yes. one is a massive game at the Artemio Franchi with both teams in really good form. So stay with us, of course. Leave your tips, your comments for this new match day in Italy. And now let's go on with the show. But first, Leo, let's focus on the bottom part of the table. Yep. First game on Friday, Skyari, Verona, both still away from the relegation spots, but especially Verona looking really bad. Uh, we mentioned it in the preview last weekend. Uh, they were facing Inter and you said that they were going to get thrashed, that Inter should win comfortably. And I don't think we are going to see a big difference like the one we saw in the Bentegodi this season 5-0 at halftime there was no game it's five defeats in six games uh, for Verona only beating uh, Roma Cagliari they are not also great they are winless in the last five but I see Cagliari slightly better than Verona uh, they are at the moment slightly better but uh, to be honest at the same time uh, because the form of Cagliari all season had they they have had uh, patches of form because uh, they had uh, no wins in the first five fixtures then seven points out of nine in the following three matches then three consecutive defeats now two consecutive draws and scoring five in the process so it's basically a team capable of letting you down massively uh, as much as uh, providing you with The, with a big surprise like a draw with uh, with Milan or a draw with uh, with Juventus away in in um, in Turin match day 13 for them was another thriller because after the heroics with Milan they snatch a late penalty to score uh, a score by Roberto Piccoli uh, to leave the Luigi Ferrari with a, with at least a point uh, they are scoring and that is key because in the first five games of the season they fail to score in four of those man uh, of them and they manage only one one goal in the 1-1 one -one with uh, with Como but in the following eight uh, Serie A fixture they have scored 13 goals and only in two fixtures Cagliari have not scored the defeats with uh, Udinese and, uh, and Bologna uh, and you have also the case of a team which the closer the end of the game the more they believe uh, they might score because look nine of the 11 points they they have they ha have been won late in the in the game Piccoli to draw against Genoa uh, scoring at the 88th minute Zapata to equalize with Milan 89th minute of the game Coco's own goal to beat Torino it came 10 minutes before the end of the match uh, the equalizer against Juventus by Marin it came in the 89th minute Piccoli winning goal against Parma happened in the 88th minute as well uh, no wonder eight of the 14 goals they have have been scored in the second half of, uh, of the games Now, Verona, yes, uh, another huge defeat for, for them. It's a team that knows how to lose, honestly, honestly because 3-0 with Juventus, 3-0 with uh, Monza, 6-1 with Atalanta, 5-0 with Inter uh, last Saturday. Uh, however, they still sit four points above the, <laughs> the relegation zone, despite losing nine games. Um, away from home, one win and, uh, and five defeats uh, for them. But at the same time, Edu, as I was saying or explaining about Cagliari's form, even though they're a little bit better, it's like I can't trust anyone here. Uh, I know Verona doesn't know how to draw, but Cagliari knows how to draw. They have drawn five games so far, which is uh, a little bit more than one third of the of the game so far in the season have been drawn for, for Cagliari. So my take here is a draw, which has high odds, I know, Draw here, 3.5, Edu. Really high odds. It's always good, uh, in my opinion, trying to find uh, a draw in a match day. Cagliari-Verona is a good one. Also, Como 
Monza could be a good yep. idea, although there is a lot of value, I think, on Monza because yes. uh, Como are super favorites. I don't see why Como is a favorite. They have a worse squad. Uh, they cannot score. It's only two goals scored in the last uh, five games. Uh, and Monza is true that this season they are struggling a lot. They are penultimate in the standings. Both are actually in relegation spots, uh, but it's a team that uh, I believe can get points, as we mentioned in the previous game against Torino, and they grabbed a, a draw. Leo, so I wouldn't be surprised in this uh, northern clash if uh, Monza are able to get some points. Uh, absolutely. We we went for the double chance uh, Monza on the previous match day, and, and it paid out. And uh, to be honest, when I see these ex strange odds where Como is super favorite against uh, Monza, Como being in a very fragile situation lately with those five defeats in the last seven. Uh, I always take that double chance because if the odds are so high for, for the X2, it means the double chance is going to be good as well. And uh, it, it was the same uh, on match day uh, 13 for, for Monza and it's the same now. Um, David De Gea is true that, uh, I don't know if you have seen it, Edu, but with a triple save at some point, uh, saved the, the match for Fiorentina when the game was still 1-0. It could have been uh, the equalizer for, for Como, so we can say they've been a little bit unlucky at some point of the game with uh, with Fiorentina. Uh, but the problem uh, for them uh, lately is not that they are conceding goals in all games. It's like they stop, uh, they stop scoring. Look, they, they managed to score nine in the first uh, six match days of this Serie A season, uh, but only four in the next, uh, in the following seven fixture for, for Como. Patrick Cutrone is uh, the team goal scorer with four, but the last, co last goal he scored was at the end of, uh, of September. Nico Pass is navigating some irregularity of late, which is understandably he's only 20 years old. It's his first season playing regularly at the professional level in, in his career. Uh, there was some mumbling in, in the stands after the, the final whistle. Fabregas was very quick to remind that uh, everyone after the game that uh, uh, there was nothing in uh, in Como five years ago apart from from the lake. Uh, so he was a bit of a, an upset figure after the game. Uh, Fabregas, uh, he said that for him this is not a problem, that he knew they were going to face this time of uh, um, of the season uh, doing not that well or fighting for, for relegation places but uh, the truth is that the pressure is going to start building up as well on on him and then Monza had not come in a, in a much better situation in terms of the table as they are also in relegation uh, places but they collected uh, one more point, one point less, sorry, than, uh, than Como. They are winless in the last five, but providing, again, good performances, I would say, with, uh, with, uh, with Monza, despite losing three and, and drawing two in the, in the last five. Daniele Maldini, again, Edu, uh, another game in which he missed a big chance. He missed a good chance against Milan. The game finished 1-0 uh, for, for Milan. He missed a great chance against Lazio. The game finished 1-0 for, for Lazio. And now, uh, as well, on Day 13, he's, he missed again at the at the beginning of the match another good chance one v one against the the goalkeeper, uh, and I look at the odds and I see a very similar pattern to Cagliari Verona. That's why my take here Edu double chance Monza 1.83 is good. Indeed, uh, I also see some good value on uh, Monza. Next one is Milan Empoli. For sure, there is no value on back in Milan. The odds are very low, uh, yep. especially with Empoli doing great uh, this season. Eh? Mid-table, uh, grab a draw with Udinese and Lecce. It's only one defeat in the last five games, and it came against Inter when they were down to 10 men. But... This Milan, Leo, they should win. It's time to win again in Serie A after two draws against Juve and Cagliari, as they did in the Champions League. It looks like they are doing better in Europe than in Italy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. A free to win yesterday against uh, Slovan uh, Bratislava. Rafael Leao had a good game. He scored. Tammy Abraham had a good game as well. Uh, and he scored. But it's the inconsistency we have been talking about all season about Milan. And... Uh, and it's a dangerous or delicate situation for Fonseca and for Milan because in the Serie A, they're nine points away from Champions League uh, spots. Uh, and uh, if they do not qualify for, for next year, uh, Champions League stage is going to be a very, very difficult time next summer for, for Milan. Let's just think that if they manage 
to get into the playoff position in this season in the Champions League, that will mean an extra 20 million for Milan. And if they manage to get one of the eight first places to get a, a straight spot in the last 16, that will mean 30 million euros extra for 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 Milan. So if it comes a point to a season where Milan or the directors, they believe that uh, um, Champions League uh, qualif qualification for next season, a top four, is not feasible. Well, Fonseca is going to be in, in big trouble. The zero zero with Juventus did not entertain absolutely anyone. I don't buy what Fonseca said that uh, it was good to keep a clean sheet against Juventus because Juventus scored four in that same stadium against Inter. Come on, Juventus arrived to that match with uh, with Milan without uh, without a striker, and Milan did not take any risk at all as well in attack. Pulisic was benched because he wasn't 100% fit after the international break, but he played yesterday from the beginning in Champions League, so I believe he's going to play as well from the start on the on the weekend. We know that Milan suffered to beat uh, Udinese at home. Now comes Empoli, who had lost just once uh, away this season, winning two uh, and drawing three. However, in the last eight for Empoli home or, or away since the end of September, they managed only one win. Uh, they have a player in good form in uh, Pietro Pellegri, who scored against uh, Udinese for a third consecutive uh, match. But the goal for Empoli against Udinese was the just one of the two shots on target they had against uh, Udinese, so it wasn't a great game again for, for Empoli anyway. Milan has scored 10 goals uh, in six matches in San Siro so far, but seven of them have been against uh, Venezia and Lecce. You mentioned Milan to win is not paying very well, so I will combine it. Uh, Milan to win plus goals over 2.5, odds of 2.37, Edu. Indeed, uh, low odds uh, to back uh, Milan, uh, higher odds, uh, surprisingly, to back uh, Bologna at home against Venezia, probably is the worst team in Serie A. It was a painful defeat, the last one against uh, Lecce, three consecutive defeats for Venezia, but this uh, Bologna is a work in progress team. Yeah. Leo, they were coming from three consecutive wins. Uh, Lazio was too much, especially if uh, Povega wasn't yeah. off in the... First half, uh, but this should be a home win. Um, the odds, are, I would say, as you would say, healthy odds, Leo. <laughs> yes, yes, they are, and, and indeed they do. I will go that route. The the X one, uh, that positive run of three consecutive defeats and nine overall without uh, without the defeat came to an end in the in the Olimpico for for Bologna. Of course, uh, Povega make it easier for 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 Lazio in this area, which is impossible to win or to draw if you are down to to ten men. Uh, and after considering the first one in the 67 minutes of of the match, uh, maybe Bologna made the mistake of. of rushing it a bit too much because there was still like 23 minutes plus added time on the game and they opened up straight away and four minutes after the first one came the, the second one for for Lazio. Uh, Vicenzo Italiano was saying actually about this what we've been discussing all season that it's impossible to play with, with 10 men at, at this level uh, nowadays and that was the case for, for them because Lazio brought more attacking more attacking players making it uh, even more difficult for, for, uh, for Bologna. Bologna that is playing tonight at home with uh, with Lille. We might see if there are any injured players, if there is going to be any rotation going into into the weekend. But anyway, Bologna should have enough to take three points against uh, this Venezia with two wins all season uh, and nine defeats for for them. Uh, they are without a win away from home. Venezia five defeats and and two draws. Sixty three percent of the goals they have conceded this Venezia they all happened away from home. So for me, Bologna to win one. 1.69 is good. And the next game that we are going to analyze is Udinese Genoa, comfortably mid table. Udinese, uh, they drew, as we said, against Empoli, but they were coming from three consecutive defeats. Yep. Uh, Genoa. Leo, we saw the debut of uh, Vieira with a draw against uh, Cagliari. I don't know if you were convinced, uh, still early days, from uh, Vieira, uh, away from home, Genoa, two wins away eh, this season. 
Yes, actually, it seemed at some point that uh, the first home win in all matches this season was coming Genoa's way against uh, Cagliari, but uh, uh, in the end, annex Genoa, like Piccoli scoring uh, two minutes before the end, uh, interrupted what was going to be a great uh, debut for for Patrick Vieira, which anyway, overall, it was it was good. I would say he changed some things. Uh, we were used to free at the back with uh, Gilardino and Vieira opted for a more conventional uh, for uh, for free free uh, good news for him some players returning from injury like uh, Johan Vasquez and and uh, and, Bit- and, and Bitinia away from home so far Genoa uh, scored three goals uh, but two of them were enough to win them games uh, one zero wins against Parma uh, and against uh, and against Monza uh, this Udinese the draw with Empoli, as I was saying before, with, with Empoli, uh, was all right. I mean, Kane and Davis uh, scoring the equalizer for for them. Udinese had to change to chase, sorry, the the game because they were down after 23 minutes and they had 16 attempts on goal against uh, against Empoli. Uh, I don't know why um, they are not playing with two at the front with the twin towers of Luca Lorenzo Luca and and Kane and Davis. Costa uh, Runhaich, the manager, is refusing to to use them together. Martin Pajero, the Argentina midfielder got injured is going to be out for a couple of weeks Alexis Sanchez uh, still out so we don't know when we're going to have the, the Chilean back in the in the CDR uh, that's why we usually see Keynan Davis or Lorenzo Luca alongside Toben or, or Iker Bravo the, the Spanish player um, for me here Edu the market to go is the goal sander I don't expect a, a goal feast at all there in, in Udine so goals under 2.5, 1.68. Next game, Parma, Lazio. Ooh, this is a good one. Now we have the interesting games of this uh, match day. Yeah. Parma, Lazio with Lazio doing great, great, great. They keep winning. It's five consecutive wins in Serie A. Only two goals conceded in those uh, five games, even away from home. They are looking uh, in really, really good form. And uh, this Parma is one of the worst teams at home in the Ennio Tardini. Only five points, only yep. one win, Leo. Yes, absolutely. This last year, one of the stories of, of the season so far. Eight wins in eight matches in all competition this season playing at home. Uh, and that was the case against uh, Bologna. We explained, made it easier because they were playing uh, Bologna with 10 men from the 35th minute of uh, of the game. Sakagni is scoring again and a very nice goal. His fifth goal of the season for for uh, for Mattia Sakagni last season he scored 10 so for sure or his best season is 10 goals in, in Serie A so for sure I believe he's gonna smash that uh, personal goal scoring record uh, Nicolò Rovella someone who is coming a bit under under the radar another great performance there in uh, in midfield he's having a great season uh, also uh, what I really like about this last year and that was even before Bologna was down to 10 men is that they keep pushing forward they use both fullbacks Manuel uh, Lazzari and Luca Pellegrini all the time pushing and pushing forward. Uh, Lazari has a lot of energy uh, and pace. Uh, actually, Baroni, the manager as well, he's very brave. With the game 0-0, zero, zero, he took Matias Vecino out. In came uh, Bulayedia, who is an attacking midfielder or, or a second or a second striker. They play uh, on first day against uh, Ludorogets. So I believe that's going to give time as well for Baroni to, to rest some players going into the weekend with, uh, with Parma. Lazio won three of the last four matches uh, away this season so they are also trying to build that amazing consistency they have at home they want to do the same away from from home and it's a good opportunity against this Parma that lost four uh, and drew one of the last five at the end of Tardini as, as you have said it's a good opportunity for Lazio as well because they will face Napoli then in four days uh, First, they will play next week for the last 16 in the in the Coppa Italia on Wednesday in Roma. And then on Mass Day 15, we're going to have a huge Napoli uh, Lazio at the Diego Armando Maradona. Uh, at the end of Tardini, six of the seven home games of Parma have been both teams to score. That's why the odds on that market at, are, uh, are a bit low on 1.60, more or less on average on, on Ospedia. Uh, where I wouldn't look anywhere else is uh, other than X2. The odds on Lazio are amazing, Edu. Lazio to win, 1.95, that's my take. 
They are playing in uh, Europe in this uh, week, but uh, still the odds are very good. We really liked uh, also Parma's proposal uh, after getting uh, promoted to Serie A, very offensive and young team. But, uh, of course, they are going to suffer like many other teams. Well, Lazio uh, having a double clash uh, this or the following week with Napoli. Napoli playing in Torino in this uh, match day after being back to the winning track with that uh, one nil win over Roma with Lukaku, as yeah. you said at the beginning of our video. A scoring, very important. This is not an easy game or shouldn't be. For Napoli playing against uh, Torino, although um, Leo Torino is one of these teams that started the season very uh, strong and now they are uh, struggling a little bit. Yeah, six defeats in the last eight for uh, for Torino. With Monza, they took a point at least to stop that run of three consecutive uh, uh, defeats. Playing in in Torino, they can uh, uh, boast a win against Atalanta, but that was very early in the in the season. Two wins, two defeats, and two draws in front of their own supporters for for uh, for Torino. Uh, Lukaku scoring on the 55th minute of the game was a difference against Roma but even before that and after that because for 70 minutes I've seen a very good Napoli against uh, Roma Edu just the last 20 minutes of course when Roma needed and had to push for for uh, for the game they were a little bit in trouble though we almost uh, scoring the, the equalizer but I think the most important thing uh, or aspect for Conte that he has to be very happy with his players with his team is the mentality because let's not forget that Napoli went into the game in the fourth position because in Inter won because Atalanta won because Lazio uh, no Lazio didn't play at that time but and Fiorentina won the won their game so it was very important for for them to to go into the game knowing that they needed the three points and they and they did it yes I know Roma is a struggling but they were coming with the new manager with Claudio Ranieri so we were, we could have expect uh, something uh, different at least from the personality in uh, from the Roma players and Napoli did very well managed that very very well. Uh, McTominay, another game in which he has not uh, left the pitch at all. Since he arrived, since he makes his debut in September for Napoli, he has completed always the, the 90 minutes. Conte was asked why he never takes out uh, McTominay. And of course, it's very important for him. Uh, two goals and two assists in 10, in ten Serie A games. But uh, he hinted... Um, Conte that uh, Raspadori could play also behind the striker like uh, the position he's using now McTominay so we may have news maybe in the coming uh, in the coming weeks we've seen Raspadori there where McTominay plays uh, often behind the striker uh, look Edu, I won't overthink uh, too much in here I'm seeing in this match day 14 uh, very good odds in many of the games uh, regarding which is the clear favorite on, on the game so for me it's Napoli to win 1.87 you have full trust in this match day in the favorites. Let's see if you trust also Inter in their trip to the beautiful Florence in the Artemio Franchi. Both teams with the same points. Fiorentina flying and flying. Eight wins and one draw in the last nine games. Also flying Moise King. Nine goals for him in yeah. this Serie A. He scored again in Como, but Inter is also very reliable, as we saw in the Champions League, beating RB Leipzig, destroying Verona. It's absolutely impossible to bet against Inter, at least for me, Leo, I keep saying that they are favorites number one to bring home again the Scudetto, but yeah. also it's difficult to not back Fiorentina playing at home with the level they are showing this season. Yes, of course. And that's why, to be honest, because of what you were saying about Inter and and despite that, this amazing, astonishing run of, of Fiorentina, uh, I won't be going uh, X1 or even a double chance. I think the goals market could be a good escape for me in, uh, in, in this one. Seven consecutive wins for Fiorentina, something that did not happen in Serie A for them since 1969. Uh, and it's, uh, it's incredible because let's remember, let's put into, perfect, into perspective that going into match day six or on match day six, this Fiorentina drew 0-0 uh, zero, zero with, uh, with Empoli. They had four draws, one win and one defeat up to match day six. And from there, uh, all wins. That game with Empoli was the 29th of, of September. So uh, they climbed the average almost of the Serie A in, in just uh, 60 days, one point behind, uh, behind Napoli. Uh, 
Raffaele Paladini must be credited, I believe, as well with this turnaround. He started with free at the back. When things weren't working, he switched to four uh, at the back. He has uh, rejuvenated uh, some players like Ricardo Sutil. Uh, well, Moise Kane is having the best season of his career, as you, as you mentioned. Last season, in 20 games, he couldn't score for Juve. And now he has 12 goals in all competition for, for this uh, Fiorentina, nine of them in, in, in Serie A. He trusted David De Gea. I will go back uh, uh, about him. After one year away from professional football, he blended experience with trust in, in youth because Pietro Comuso, the centre-back, uh, has already been called even to the, to the Azzurra. He gave the debut to a 17 year so like Tommaso Rubino. Uh, they have also had five consecutive clean sheets away from home, this uh, this Fiorentina, and that's where De Gea enters the room. I mentioned uh, about against Como, a triple save, an amazing triple save for for uh, for De Gea. Uh, actually, Fabrega said he hasn't seen a save like that in 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 years, uh, and he, and it was De Gea who started this run on seven consecutive wins because uh, that started uh, against Fior against Milan at home with a two wing one. In that game, De Gea saved two penalties and many other chances. Uh, and also, I can't uh, forget that in his debut, De Gea, uh, his debut was in Conference League, and it was in a game he conceded three goals against the Puskas Academy, the Hungarian team so to be honest uh, even myself I haven't seen this coming that the hair was going to be uh, at this level so quick so soon for for uh, for Fiorentina uh and now comes Inter, the demolition of Verona. We mentioned five goals for them in 41 minutes uh, against Verona. Joaquin Correa had a, a chance after a long time and he scored. Carlos Augusto played at the left wing. The only bad news was uh, <coughs> Francesco Acervis uh, that got injured. Uh, on Tuesday night, seven changes uh, on Champions League in the starting lineup, uh, which remarks what we have been saying as well all season, that the squad for M for Inter is just amazing. And that's why we believe they are uh, the favourites anyway to win again the, the title because ha they have a massive and great and great squad. Uh, look, Edu, the odds on Fiorentina, of course, are amazing, 3.75. On the odds on Inter are very good as well, 2.1. Moise King to score any time, 3.4. But as I said, I will go the goals market. Goals over 2.5, 1.87. Yeah, I wouldn't touch as well the 1x2. Uh, both teams to score is 1.7 also, Leo. Could be a good option, 1.6. 1.7 yep. uh, could be a good option because uh, it's uh, very difficult, this one, to say who is going to be the winner. Next game is Lecce, Juventus. Leo, and here we have the team uh, that considered less goals. Juventus with seven and the team who scored yeah. less goals. Lecce <laughs> with six. So I wouldn't expect many goals from Lecce. Juve need to win. So the obvious choice here is uh, Juve to win to nil, to be honest. Yes, I do have that one. That's the one uh, I will be going. I'll actually pay uh, quite healthy. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, Juventus to nil. Uh, to win to nil is 2.6. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, actually pretty, pretty, pretty good. Uh, Shits, Leo, for you in Serie A. Absolutely. So it's is there? Is the Argentina from uh, in the Serie A? Not that uh, Argentina to win to nil now is Juventus to to win to nil. Uh, although lately for Argentina is not exactly that, but uh, we are in Serie A now. Uh, we will go back in March to those uh, South American and Argentinian uh, theme. Uh, look, they are traveling to Birmingham, or they travel already right to Birmingham and to play Aston Villa, uh, Juventus with 14 outfield players only. This is the, the current crisis they are involved in terms of like injuries. 14 outfield players and three goalkeepers. Thiago Mota had to take to, to, to Birmingham. Now Western McKenney uh, was added to the list that includes, of course, Dusan Blaovic, Nico Gonzalez, Douglas Luiz, uh, bueno, Bremer uh, until uh, the end of the, of the season, uh, Arkadius Milic. In San Siro, Kubmeiner, we mentioned on the... Champions League show faced a lot of criticism. His performance, in which he lost 13 times possession of the ball, uh, wasn't good, but he was deployed in an unfamiliar role, playing as a number 10 uh, and alternating as well with Weston McKenney in, in the false nine uh, position. We got to know anyway yesterday that the Cub Miners was, uh, was with Fiver, that he was sick playing that game, that he wanted to do it for, for the team. So maybe that is uh, the excuse there for 
for him anyway, I believe that uh, against Aston Villa and against Lecce on Sunday, Timothy Weah is going to play the, the number nine uh, role. He has seven goals and four assists in 43 matches playing in that uh, striker uh, position, even if uh, Arkadius Milic return soon I think in January we're going to see Juventus going for uh, for a striker Milic scored four goals in 32 games last season so that's not the greatest insurance cover when uh, Blaovic cannot uh, cannot play there are four points behind leaders Napoli it's not tragical I would say for, for Juventus but yes but there are concerns there are criticism Chumota there are some who are uh, uh, pointing to the fact that Juventus is not entertaining that the games from uh, Juve this season or some of them like the one with Milan resemble a lot what uh, uh, we have seen with Juventus under Massimiliano Allegri but uh, but now it's, uh, it's Lecce so this shouldn't be a, a problem for, for Juventus uh, away from home Juventus has not lo- haven't lost a game uh, yet Lecce got a massive result in Venezia yes on Monday night which took them out of the of the relegation zone from the top teams that traveled to Puglia Atalanta won 4-0 and Fiorentina 6-0 so again I repeat my take here Juventus to win 2-0 2.6 I can understand uh, why Lecce, surprisingly, eh, out of the relegation with only six points. You cannot do more with less. Uh, three wins yeah. <laughs> and uh, three draws is a great uh, tally of points uh, with this offensive power. And for Monday, we have a great game. Uh, Roma-Atalanta, this new Roma with uh, Ranieri on the yeah. bench, uh, trying to be better defensively, uh, trying to put uh, the dressing room together and make again a team. I guess uh, Ranieri is the right choice for that. But of course, the first game was a very difficult one against Napoli and was a defeat. The second one or the third one, because they are playing also in the Europa League, is not easy as well against uh, another informed team that like Atalanta. We saw it again in the Champions League. They are running riots. Uh, Leo, Atalanta, they are unstoppable. Ten wins and one draw in the last 11 games and they are thrashing every team. Absolutely. Uh, yesterday was impressive. Yes, again, young boys, uh, bottom of the league stage in, in the Champions League. But this Atalanta is fourth already. Uh, I mean, we're going to see them uh, qualifying to straight to the to the last 16. Uh, Matteo Retegui and the Cotelare scoring a, a brace. The Cotelare also contributing with uh, free assists on top of his goal. It was the first Champions League goal for, for, for Retegui, who scored the opening uh, goal against uh, Parma. 12 goals in 13 matches in Serie A for, for Retegui, Gasperini rested uh, Ademola Lukman yesterday and I would personally like to see the three of them together Lukman, Retegui and, and De Ketelare uh, which does not happen very often because uh, Lukman, when Lukman and Retegui play they have Mario Pasalic uh, behind them sometimes like against uh, Napoli Gasperini used Lukman, Pasalic and De Ketelare and Retegui was uh, was in the bench we have seen also uh, Samarsic as well in, in the mix actually Samarsic yesterday scored a beautiful goal against uh, young boys uh, as well uh, and Roma is completely the opposite of that run of 10 wins in 11 games for Atalanta four defeats in the last five Serie A match days for them Claudio Ranieri is their fourth manager of 2024 uh, they look at they have even changed the, they fired even the team psychologist who was there for only 20, 20 days I was reading yesterday poor guy he was on the bench before the international break he was about to sign his contract but no when Ranieri was coming in, they fired the team psychologist and I would say they might need one. I mean, this team, because uh, they need to recover some form. They need to know who they are. They have good players. So it's, uh, it's difficult to understand this uh, Roma who is sitting three points above the relegation zone. Three points above relegation zone, but they are 15 away from Champions League uh, spots. They were poor for 70 minutes against uh, Napoli. Yes, they could have equalized in the last 20 with uh, with Dobic. Paulo Dybala was uh, sent onto the pitch with two minutes to, to, to go at the 88th minute of the game. I don't understand. If he's not fit to play, just don't play him. But if if he's fit to play, to put him on with two minutes to go, I don't know. I had the feeling that Ranieri wanted to send to, to send uh, a message. It was a very strange uh, situation. For Roma, nine of the 13 points they have have been won uh, at home. Uh, this is another game 
uh, in this match day 14 with uh, very good odds for the for the favorite uh, with X2 showing odds of 2.38. Uh, My expectation anyway. Way Edu as always with Atalanta is uh, is goal, so that's how I'm going. Both team to score yes plus goals over 1.5 odds of 2.15. Last season was a draw with goals at the Olympico. Yep. Uh, so let's see if Roma are able to get a point with Ranieri. Right now they are. 12 points away from European spots. So it's going to be very tough, almost a miracle, I would say, for Ranieri to qualify Roma for Europe next season. But still, of course, really early days. Great game at the Olympico to yeah. finish this match day. Uh, Leo, remember, of course, that you can also post your tips in our tipster uh, section in Otspedia and participate in our tipster competitions. Uh, we have the Premier League, uh, NBA, NFL, uh, plenty of them. So just sign up for free and you can participate. Leo, tell me your safe bet. Double chance uh, Lazio, 1.29. And the ACA? Milan uh, to win. Fiorentina, first half. Double chance. Roma Atalanta both team to score yes plus goals over 1.5 uh, gives me a AK of 4.47 ok Leo thank you very much thanks everyone for Pleasure watching Arrivederci amico